Karen. Yeah. Um, come in spring also if excused. Charlie George is here. There he is. Uh, Joe Desch is here. Michelle is here. Peter Lampesis is here. Pat Kaliski is also excused after 30 hours straight and a warming break in Dover. <laughs> uh, I'm here and Denise is here. So um, just three people absent otherwise. Um, the first item I had, and I, I sent them around today, and thank you, Angela, for reminding. I couldn't see on my emails whether I'd sent them before or not. So we have the minutes from the September 21st meeting. Do I have a motion to... Uh, that's a motion from Angela. I have one correction. Could you just make me an attendee? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, um, so, so we'll have a second from Charlie to start right. discussing them, and then, and then discussion. Um, Charlie's got a correction. Um, I also noticed that Miles' name was, at least in the version I looked at last night, was English instead of England. Okay. So, just to assert and replace on that. Any other comments on the notes? Okay. So, uh, all in favor of approving the notes as. As revised, say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? That motion carries, and we've accepted the minutes to finalize as uh, as amended just now. So uh, tonight's uh, meeting is about budget presentations, and we have the CIP, the Highway Department, and Transfer Station on the agenda. And since George was here first. Um, uh, George, why don't you give a presentation on the budget? Now, we don't have hard copies of the budget, but uh, I did submit it uh, electronically to folks um, today. If you've got it on your computer or if you can look on somebody's shoulder, I apologize for that. Yeah. Do you have a picture? I don't have a color. No, I'm going to. So, um, George, if you want to walk through the budget for the items on highway. Can I just ask okay. a question, just because this is a different format. The 2020 column S, the 2022 proposed appropriation, that's kind of what we're thinking is going to happen for next year? Is that the format? And then there, what would be helpful, I think, also is there used to be a column that would show percent budget spent in this case for 2021. So 2021 approved appropriation, and then the year-to-date expenditures. I mean, what I usually do is I look down, and say if I'm half, if, if the percentage is somewhere in that time frame, it's, it's less of a concern versus you're halfway through the year and you've done 100%. So. Under our year-to-date, there are two thousand dollars in expenditures. I'm sorry, did you answer? Column R shows the year-to-date expenditures. Right, I was but looking no for the percent. percentage oh, well, the between percentage. Right. what was approved and what's been spent so far for the year. Yeah, it used to be on now. Well, I'll be sure to add that, John. Thank you. And we will have chances to look at all these multiple <laughs> times between now and, and, uh, and the hearing. Um, go ahead, George, if you want to just walk through it. All right, as you see, uh, this year, I, since last year I didn't put nothing in for raises I, uh, because I left it up to the board. This year I added pay raises as the primary part of our budget. And uh, the hours and stuff that we put in, I, I, my position, I offered up a few different ways of doing it. You could put me in an hourly rate with overtime, or leave it at a salary rate but with a salary increase. Uh, I put in $62,400, which is a $6,700 increase. I understand that's high. But you've got to start somewhere. So that's why we decided to uh, do it that way. I know there's a certain amount of money for the budget, so there's a lot of lines that have not increased, that have stayed the same, or have gone down. The uh, Ed's position at the transfer station as a manager, 
needs to be raised because it does what a lot of people haven't seen in uh, the transfer station part of it. There's a lot more to it than just throwing garbage away and uh, what we do with the recycling, etc. Recycling is brought in a significant amount of money, so just trying to do all these jobs, we figured, I figured Ed should be getting at least a minimum of 22 to 23 dollars an hour. So I raised that that salary rate line up also. And the part-time line has been raised up. We have a, given an increase to uh, one of the subjects, one of our, my employees already. I'd like to get the other guys. Uh, I'd like to have more hours to do that work on. Again, that is a total of total hours uh, for part time and winter staff. So I'd like to have more hours, more money there, so we could do more. You know, do, again, use the art guys more often to do our jobs. I don't know which way you want to go. Item by item, we're going to discuss this stuff, or we just going to just go right down two here and just. But let me know what's going on. Well, do people have something that they can look at to, to ask questions? And why don't we why don't we ask questions uh, rather than walk through at this point? Can, can I just comment? Sure. <clears throat> so the budget that um, you all received was the select board's recommended budget. So let me just go down through <clears throat> what George had proposed okay. originally. So on line one seventy seven, um, the proposal from the department head was sixty two thousand four hundred dollars. And that's a 12% increase. And then line 178 <clears throat> was um, proposed at $50,000, uh, and that was a 30% increase. I'm sorry, 13% increase. And then line 179 um, was $25,000, which was a 23% increase. And when the select board met, <clears throat> we we um, discussed it at length, and we felt that we had to find a compromise in there. And so what we agreed on was what you received from us, the, the select board's proposed budget of a 5% increase for each of those lines. So, um, so, what, so what George um, had presented um, isn't reflected in here. This is the select board's um, proposal. Okay. Um, we can, I can provide to you um, all of the numbers that were um, presented by the department head. So. How does the committee feel about, about getting, it would probably be nice to have that information just to so, perspective? So <clears throat> I, I did get an opinion um, from legal about how it should be presented. Okay. And they said um, what we should be presenting to you is the select board's budget, okay. but we do need to make available to you what the department heads are requesting. So I can do that in, in another format, okay. if that sounds good. I think the, the consensus of the group is they'd like to see that. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. Do you want me to repeat those numbers again for anybody? Um, well, we got it here. So what I heard was no. the increase was a 12% offer you know, asked for, and the actual increase was more like. Well, no. Um, so line 177 was a 12% increase. Okay. Line 178 was a 13 percent increase, and line 179 is a 23 percent increase okay. from the department. Per, excuse me, from the department. Yes. Okay. I just had a comment about if I could. To, Please. So this the the term merit based is something I'm a little confused by because it seems more like this is aligning these jobs and the requirements of the jobs with a comparable pay, rather than sitting down at the end of a period and determining some sort of merit increase. I mean, I'm a little bit confused about your use of the term merit-based. Um, so actually, if you don't mind, um, if I can ask Jack to speak a little bit about that. Um, Jack. Well, I'm Jack Boyle. I'm the new member of the select board. Yes. Oh, okay. And Jack is actually, so what we agreed is that I've mentioned John, um, so I was going to sit through a couple of meetings until Jack kind of came up to speed on the budget. Um, but Jack's going to be the regular ex officio. Um, so we, when we talked about merit, he did a, a great job kind of explaining um, what our thought process was about that. Sure. So if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I, I, I think that thought process is we're looking for job descriptions 
and we're looking for performance reviews. Mm -hmm. And a portion is just going to be raises because of the economy, but a portion of it is going to be based on performance. So we'll give a pool to like George and say it's 5%, this is what it is, cost of living is a certain percentage, but the rest of it is adjustable based on the performance of the people. So this is not, we're not looking at salaries that people are actually going to receive, it's going to be determined in performance reviews? Yes. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Were there uh, any other line items that are different? Yes. That George proposed? Sure. Do we want to go down through them, George? Yeah, I can. Okay. And then I did before, I'm sorry, go ahead. before we move off the salary. So, I know, so George came in with some numbers, the select board looked at some other, you know, came back with a different one. Was the, was the compromise based on, on similar pay structures for those kinds of employees mm -hmm. at a similar type of facility with the similar types of responsibility? Well, that's the other part of it, Joe, is we have, we, so part of the original discussion was about market-based increases. But we don't really have any market data. Mm -hmm. So that's the other part of this is we need right. to gather market data between now and then. Which is coming in already. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, George. Um, to make sure that we're kind of lining up or we're moving in the right direction. For that. Right, right. You can't, I understand, you can't always think, oh, we're way far behind. We've got to bump it all up at right. one point. But if you have a plan yeah. for it, it's, it's right. something. That that part of the thing that they have to do is provide that market data, too. Yep, yep, good. And the, the importance of the performance thing is we don't want them to do it just to do it. It's got to add value. So that if you're looking at it, you're looking at what is the person bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. So part of it's based on seniority, cost of living, and performance. And, and so we expect that the managers will make the determination how to compensate their employees. So George will make a decision about um, the people that work for him about who gets what percentage after cost of living. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea was at least have a base cost of living and then the rest of that money would be based, George can make a decision on who um, you know, is performing but it, best. But it's driven by performance reviews and for the, uh, for like George, the select board will do his. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Okay, uh, well, payroll taxes and state retirement is stuff that out of my control, so that's usually taken care of by the administration. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't change anything on the safety equipment, preventative health. We didn't spend anything on that, but in case someone ends up uh, needing a DOT physical for some reason or other, other you know, going over to the uh, Ready care, which is no longer there, but uh, if they get have to go in for to get checked on something, or for, we used to use it for DOT physicals, which we are exempt from because we're town employees. If we're going to if we're going to drive trucks, we don't need to have that. So, um, that three hundred dollars, I'm, I'm just I just left it there. We haven't used it this year. We may not use it. Uh, Cell phones. We, uh, we yeah, we already spent uh, six hundred and something dollars on it. I left that at a thousand. I didn't change uh, uniforms that we left alone. Supplies we left alone. Uh, I had ten thousand there for. Uh, Equipment, we had discussed that last night. We're going to use some of that, take some of that down. We're going to drop that down to 7500 I believe. 7000 7, Uh Because we haven't spent very much of it this year, and we'll just watch what we spend next year just to help on other things. Uh, equipment rental, I left, I put 6000 in there to, in case we need to rent the uh, escalator to do some guard shoulder work and stuff, or if, if we need to rent any other equipment for any other reason. Vehicle maintenance, we need to raise. Uh, we cut it last year, 
and he kicked us in the butt before the budget was passed. So we were, before the budget got passed, we were already spent $15,000. So I raised it up, uh, we raised it up to 20000 again, we brought it back up to twenty. I mean, vehicles, we may not have an issue next year, but we had one, you know, a couple of good issues right in the beginning of the winter, with unforeseen things on the backhoe and then on one of the bigger trucks. So, George, on the, so far this year, you've spent more than was budgeted. Is that kind of... Well, yeah, we're not, I haven't even got all the bills in yet. We yeah. just did inspection and we spent, you know, we got a couple more thousand dollars worth of stuff that happened. So, so this is going to be a line item that's going to go over the budgeted amount. Correct. Okay. But we'll, we have the money in the budget from other locations from other to cover it, okay. so... Uh, where are we? Vehicle means. Vehicle fuel they left alone. Uh, no, actually, we raised it up 500. Wait a minute. We raised it up 500, not knowing what the price of fuel has been doing. It's been up and down a little bit. We haven't used it. Doesn't show that we used a lot yet. Of course, we have winter months coming in. We you know we don't know what December is going to bring. Is it so primarily we, diesel, George? Primarily diesel fuel. Yes, the only one that's gas is uh, pickup. And actually, you're seeing a significant difference this year in in fuel usage, and we may be able to drop that line a little bit. We changed from on-road diesel to off-road diesel because we're exempt, uh, and uh, that was re recommended by Gag B. Gagnon and Sonny. He said all the other highway departments use an off-road diesel in the trucks, which doesn't affect them. We don't pay taxes on it, but if we bought fuel, other, you know, if we bought on-road fuel, you're paying taxes on it, you're paying all that other stuff. So we went with the off-road diesel, dropping the price of diesel fuel down considerably. Signs, I, I left alone. Uh, we don't spend fourteen hundred right now, but you know, signs they get hit by cars or what have you. We need some uh, road construction signs, and they're about a hundred and some odd dollars a piece. So you know, there's some signs that we need to get. I left that line alone since it wasn't that big a line anyway. Uh, line striping I left alone. They may be a little increase next year, they told us, but uh, we're covered on that. With We didn't do, uh, this year, it'll show that there was a decrease. We did not do the lines on Jesse Doe Road pending construction next year, hopefully. Because that happened, we probably broke up with the road, so we didn't bother painting that road. Um, tree maintenance, we're not getting caught up. It shows that we haven't spent much on it yet. However, our work ain't being done until December and early January, because the schedule. So could I ask a question about um, recognizing that you're gonna do the work in December and January? You're anticipating an increase in the tree work and... I already get the quote. Oh, okay. Uh, and again, it, we, you know, we're going to... Uh, we have to schedule it early, so we have to get the quotes on it and so we can get on this schedule. Oh, I was thinking about in 2022. There's an increase of 2,500. Right. Well, we have several trees that, we, you know, that only limits the amount of trees that we can cut. Okay. So, I mean, some of the trees, it costs, you know, it costs us $2,000, $3,000. We have to bring a crane in and cut some, you know, one tree down so it doesn't take long to go through that. We have several trees that are dying along the roadways that we need to take care of before we have some major issues. We are going to work with uh, Eversource, hopefully, to see if they can do some tree work for us when they're in the area uh, that's close to their power lines. Uh, you know, it protects their equipment more than it does us. We can pull them out of the road very easily, but they get a lot of work to do when the tree comes down, so. Uh, sand and gravel, that line. It's at 3,000. I, I, we may be able to do something with that line there. Now that we use it with road money, we can probably change that line up a little bit. I haven't, we haven't, I still had 3,000 there. But depending on, uh, you know, it's on other projects, I, 
that we used that gravel for to patch, you know, fill in some washouts and stuff like that. But I think we, with the road line, we may be able to leave that one. Maybe I'll drop that one a little bit. I'm not exactly sure on that yet. So uh, what I have on mine, excuse me, George, what I have on mine is 1,500. Uh, is, that, is that right? Or am I looking at the wrong line? Same gravel. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Sorry, I was looking at the next line. Did I look at the wrong line? Yes, it is. No, no it's 3,000. 6,500. 6,500 for Santa Bravo? That's what's... Line 194. Is that salt? Is that what you're using during the winter as well, or is this just dirt? We don't use any sand in winter. <coughs> so wait, am I missing the salt line? Maybe I am. The salt okay. line is on the coal patch. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, we we use strictly salt for our road uh, de-icing. Uh, due to the fact that it saves us money on street sweeping, uh, catch basin cleaning, Etc. And it's faster just using the salt to get the roads cleaned up. And we use it all. It's all done by computer. We set the trucks at a certain rate. When the truck slows down, salt is slow down. It's all computerized. We we go. We did the green coat no classes. And you set so much tons per mile. It's, so you're not putting a lot of salt out. Not like the state where they come and dump and salt all the time. We just we we go out in the beginning of the storm, put salt down so it doesn't freeze underneath so we can scrape the roads and use it as needed during the storm. The truck salt is not running all the time. Then we go out at the end of the storm, put a good load of salt out so it takes the slush and stuff off. We go back and scrape that off, hit it one more time or rather, you know, use the end stand, the end of it. So we're not salting every time the trucks are out there. We've uh, maintained the salt budget of uh, 25,000 since I've been here and always had some left over. The salt shed is full right now, so that's still on last year's budget, uh, and we're going to start this winter with the full salt shed. Catch basin cleaning this year, you noticed it. Uh, you don't notice it here, but it had gone up a little bit. We did not only catch basin cleaning, but we did mapping of our catch basin system, and it took us longer to do the project because, and that added hours to the catch basin cleaning. So we went over, I don't know if it's actually gone over on that line, but I know it's up. Uh, well, they haven't sent the bill yet. But uh, I know it was a little longer in time-wise. Oh, wait a minute, we go back. I don't see it on there yet as paid, so I can't actually give you a number on that one. George, um, oh, um, I was wondering about line 195. Uh, street sweeping and why that was reduced. Uh, I noticed that you're not using the full amount of budget, but I guess my question relates to Actually, the future. Uh, and, you know, street sweeping, we used $980 worth this year. Right. Because they come in and did the job faster than they normally do. That's great. Are, are we doing two, two streets? We did it twice two last year because. In the stormwater uh, permit. permit plan, you're supposed to, they, they recommend you do it twice. That's why I'm asking the question, because it has a, it, it looks like the budget is going down with that, but I'm concerned about how it might spill over to, uh, spill over, pull right. waters, but how it might affect the permitting process and the cost of that. Even though it's non-point source pollution and it can't be measured, what how are we going to, are you going to do two, two sweeps going forward or one? Or? I can do another sweep if, if necessary. Uh -huh. We have a new machine, we bought a new sidewalk machine that has a broom on it. So some of the sweeping we're going to be doing ourselves. Uh -huh. You know, like downtown we can probably push stuff away from the curb and push it into the bucket of the machine and do it ourselves and have the sweeper do the outskirts so we don't have to run the small machine everywhere. You know, I mean, and the new sweep is also going to take care of sweeping the sidewalks. So the new machine is actually going to fit on the sidewalks. It's a, it's a new sidewalk machine, so we'll be able to treat our sidewalks also where we haven't in the past. So that will help us. We can use that sweeper. When there's one or two inches of snow, we may use the broom. So that will keep the sidewalks not only snow-free, but it's going to take the dirt off and put it on the shoulders. So it'll be easy to clean up in the spring. So, and all of that can be done with a reduced budget from 3000 to 
Uh, the, the reducing it to the 1500, I think it'll be fair and safe because uh, we don't, you know, you get some sand in the summertime, but you're not getting the amount of sand that you'd have right after a winter, or, you know, like when we do it in the spring. So I think we'll be okay with that. Okay. Thanks. My uh, recollection from the stormwater committee is that it, you had to kind of demonstrate that you didn't need to sweep as much, but since we don't use sand on the roads, we just use the salt mix. We're likely not to need to sweep as much, but you just have to show first year through right. that that you don't need it, and then you can reduce the number of times. Um, oh, that's helpful. Thanks. Once a year. And that's like catch basin cleaning. Okay. I'm going to leave the money the same this year, but next year when we start doing it again, this summer we're not going to clean some of them because we're not necessary. We're, we're not taking more than an inch or two of stuff out of our catch basins now, yeah. and it's not worth paying to have it done every year like they recommend. You know, we could do two or three years, because you got sumps in the bottom of these catch basins that you can go up three feet and still be safe enough for the water to flow, depending on the height of your first discharge pipe. So anything below the first discharge pipe, you can bring up. So we've measured everything, everything's been mapped this year with a grant we received uh, from the government to uh, do mapping on that system to get it in, uh, in place. And, uh, you know, we're trying every which way we can to eliminate some items so we don't have to keep, you know, spending the big dollars on things. Mapping is uh, almost complete. You know, it also shows what our structures look like inside. We take, we photograph every structure, seeing what we're going to need for work. You know, there's, there's some significant things that are coming out of this. Everything will be GPS. So if we have an issue with, a, a, you know, a storm drain or something like that is going to be on GPS. The key is you have to document your conditions, and once you've documented it, you can have a reason not to do the catch basin cleaning every year and things like that. So you, just, you just need to get a baseline, and that's what we're... Yeah, having the baseline data is really awesome. Great work, George. Um, I'm sorry. Can I have a follow-up on that, George? Because you know um, the garden club's driveway situation in that catch basin that's right there at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the ones that has a high level of sand? Because it's still washing out, even the though we have a swale and we have all this fancy no, the stuff. Sand, and the sand is actually be after it, though it's washing out after the storm drain. Right, because the storm so, drain so doesn't... We're not getting a lot of sand in the storm drain. So what it is is the rush of water that comes down that right. hill and the leaves plug it, the water is going over the storm drain. Some, you know, we try to get out before every significant rain and check the storm drain so we pull the leaves and stuff up. That way there's sometimes you miss one or two. I mean, we have the issue with the ones in the swales on on Boundary Street because all the leaves end up in that the, the deeper uh, some, uh, holes where the leaves, uh, I mean, where the uh, drains are. I, I know it keeps washing out down here. I don't know what we can do down there other than put some, you know, stone in that entrance can keep it from washing out, but... But you don't think it's dirt in the storm? Drain? No, because we cleaned the storm drain, it was having anything in it. You know, it, because the storm drain's actually before the driveway. No, I know that, but in the past, the storm drain used to fill with the sand, like literally fill with yeah, the sand, well, but I mean, now you're saying there's no but sand. No, I mean, we clean that one as well as the rest of them, and the sand would have to come from before it. Right. And usually we don't have it have any on the roads because it's not washing out of yards it's washing it's actually washing the driveway out at the right. uh and that's from a rush of the water that comes down the side of the road so the drain's not big enough or something you know if it's plugged up with stuff and you know that it's really it's not the problem with that one it's not a deep it's just a, a catch basin and it's not a deep sump like the rest of them so a lot of it it just goes right you know it's going right over that can't handle the right. flow of the water more than anything. Right. Let's, let's shift back to the budget so we can get out of just here before 930. <laughs> Another question, Michelle? Or? Nope, I said that was just a quick question. <laughs> uh, so, George, what, you were on. Okay, okay, well, the last thing I have on is the road maintenance line. I'd, I was hoping to bring it back up. I decided that uh, we could, if we bring it to 275, we can get, you know, we can do as much as that will give us. So, so you're going to talk about it? Yeah, Sorry. we can. Okay, sure. Um, so um, we 
when we looked at it, we were um, concerned that we didn't have a concrete plan. Um, we did sign up for the Stratford Regional Planning Commission study, um, so, but that won't happen probably this year. Um, and so, you know, we were looking at a, originally a 26% increase in that budget line. So we talked a lot about um, the roads and um, a plan, and it's a short list. It's actually um, a short-term plan for this coming year. Um, one of the things that we discussed and hoped for is that we put a line item back into SIP, and it used to exist in SIP, for road um, maintenance and resurfacing. Because there was some excess funds, I think, this year, Joe. Um, and in seeing that, we thought, well, you know, why would we not consider using that for our roads? Um, so that's one um, thing we were considering. And the other part, I'm kind of going into SIP here. Um, there was some savings in one of the capital items based on our discussions with the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you probably saw in the capital that with that savings, proposed savings in SIP, we could actually come up with almost another $45,000 in road maintenance funds, but out of SIP. Um, so that's why we felt comfortable with 275 on the operating budget, um, hoping that maybe we could use some SIP money um, for uh, additional work. Yes, I, I guess I don't... I'm not that familiar with the, is it, is it eligible to do that? I it guess. was in the capital line. It used to be. Oh, no, it used to be. Yeah. But you're not proposing to put the entire maintenance, road no. maintenance into SIP? No. Just no. to have a way of, of having a line item. Kind of like a there. contingency. Yeah. You know, where we have, if there's excess funds um, that we can see, like you saw this year, mm -hmm. we could think about using it towards roads because mm -hmm. these funds don't go very far. Mm -hmm. No, I, I understand that. Just procedurally, is that an eligible thing that you can do? Because right there's a Warren article that says this much money is going to go into SIP and then the select board kind of decides how they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Is it? And But that's across projects that are already there. Can you take it out of out of SIP and basically put it into a, an operating budget item? No, know. it would be a Warren. It would be okay. a Warren article. Um, so, for example, this year, the warrant article would be to approve $45,000 in road resurfacing money. So On top we, of what's in the operating yeah. budget. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So okay. just like it used to be, it used to be a warrant article. But it used to be for the whole number. That's right. Was it? So now so we're going to say it's going to be an operating budget plus yeah. a, a fund that's available to handle overages that sure. are in the operating. Okay. So that's why we felt comfortable with um, leaving at 275. Um, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Any, uh, I have a few questions on the, on the road resurfacing, but does anybody else have questions on that item? Mm -hmm. So, as you mentioned, having a plan is really important. Um, I feel like each year we kind of throw a number out there. Um, and not really know. I mean, it works. We've, we've been doing great, great work. Of course, my road got paid, so uh, but but um, it just it feels like you know we should be having working toward a plan. Like you know, what's the next worst road that we need to work on, and and when did we last resurface so that because bituminous pavement cracks and breaks down over time, so we know in ten years we're gonna have to do the other one again. Mm -hmm. and just kind of revolving. So I'd really like to see a plan rather than. Sort of, okay, it's three hundred thousand this year, or two seventy five next year, and it doesn't feel. We, do you want to? Uh, George, you have one, right? Uh, roads that we're hoping to get. I don't have final dollar figures. We do know that we want to do Jesse Doe because that road is just about ready to crumble. Uh, that was, I think, come in at a hundred and thirty some odd thousand last year to completely redo that road. Of course, you're going to see some increases in the oil prices or what have you. Uh, for next year's budget, that would take care of a good part of it. Um, possibly overlaying a good portion for Karis and reclaiming a section over where the apartment houses are because that's breaking up, and overlaying the rest of it. Uh, we talked about milling. Stockdale Circle, revamping all the, all the, all the manholes 
you know, it's all part of the con be part of the contract, including manholes, raise them, lower them, whatever they have to do. The reason for milling is to save the curbing that's there and bringing it down an inch so we can resurface the road back to an inch and a half, you know, put another inch and a half on it so we can get that road in good condition. Uh, and the, while we're in that section, we might as well do Dorothy, which is not a big circle. Now, hopefully, if we can get those things done in that budget figure of 255 or whatever, we could get out of you know, if we could get another 45 or whatever. Out of I'd like to see Pine Street milled and overlaid also. And that's, break, that's got a section that's breaking up in there. And Kelwin, we're, we have uh, Kelwin Drive is a short road, and that's also. You know, we'll skip one or the others, but Kelvin Drive needs some big attention down in the back. Uh, and we've got a couple of storm drains down there that need to be repaired, which actually go through people's properties, so we've got to get permits, uh, you know, per, uh, permits from the people to do where they run off. It's, so. Hey, George, you provided us with a list. You could probably provide it with to them. I, you know? Yeah, I don't think, I did not have Kelvin on there. We talked about it, Kim and I, and we talked about it a few times, and I didn't have Kelvin. I keep forgetting Kelvin. Because okay. it sits out there in no way land. <laughs> right, nobody ever thinks of color. So George does have a list, that he, and it's um, categorized by severity. It's in document form, Word doc form. I was going to put it in Excel form. And once I get to that, I'm happy to share it with you. And that we're going to use that to go with, with Stratford Regional and go over all these roads again. Mm -hmm. Revamp, you know, what's what, and see where we are with them. I wanted to do lower mill. But before we go there, I think we need to find out who owns it. Okay. That's the road going into the water treatment plant. It's not designated on any side. I mean, they're, they're parking and plowing and doing everything else. And I was told by Sean Gooden today that they never plowed it before. And since I've been here, I've been plowed because I told it had to be plowed. So is it a town road or is it not a town road? So that's another thing. We, before we do anything down, it's starting to have some places that are breaking up so they I'm sure if it's theirs, they'd like us to fix it for them, <laughs> or vice versa, but we, we've got to get the final answers on that before we, I can't, I don't want to do anything that's not right. So, so just so you know, um, the original uh, figure that George had asked for was 350000 okay. um, and we kind of came down to two seventy five dollars um, with the hope that we can maybe get some excess funds out of SIP as well, uh, which would be a bonus. Okay. And when we come up with these numbers, or when we do actually put the contracts in, are we, are we bidding, or are we going directly to one contractor? We changed contractors this year, we went to Bronx. Uh, I feel that the salesman the town's been using, Chris uh, Math Matheson, has, he has changed. He had left for Pike and went to Bronx. I feel the work that Bronx has done is far superior to what I've been seeing with Pike recently. The prices that Bronx has given us were significantly lower than the price that we got from Pike. I haven't gone to any other contractors because they give us a better price when we deal with that one contract. He's not giving us bidding prices. If, we wanted to, if, he, would, if he was bidding against somebody else, his prices would not be where they are today. They'd like to get the work from us early because our budgets are early in the year compared to most towns. So we give them the early work, and they give us the better pricing. So that's one reason why I like to stay with him. And he, and he comes out anytime we want to talk about roads and anything like that. You know, he's helped me with a lot of this other stuff that's going on. We can put it out to bid, but I got a feeling you're going to see some different pricing. You know, and that's that's just my opinion. <laughs> that, I mean, it works. For a lot of towns do the same thing. They, you know try to work with the guys that have given them some good deals and they give it and they give them a little bit more for their a little more bang for their buck. Um, and I just want to make a comment. So after this year I think it would be advantageous if we could actually get bids before we come to the table with a number. Um, so have a plan of the roads that need to get the most attention and have bids so we can have a more accurate number. Although we probably have to have a ten percent increase on that, but at least have a better idea. Because right now it's just a guess. It's what you can do for a certain amount of money. Right. I mean, he, he can't just, he's not going to throw numbers out all the time just to say, well, you know, we, I asked him, we rode around and looked at these roads, and he said, we can, 
probably get a lot more money, you know, a lot more stuff done for how many welding equipment here and stuff like that. And then working in an area, you can get quite a bit more done anyway. But I guess my to hear that we're getting much lower prices from Brock as opposed to Pike, and we always just went right to Pike and took whatever they gave us, then it makes me think we should be looking at more than one contractor. That's all. It's, I think it's pretty standard in public, public work. So that, that's not for today. Um, any other questions or comments on the highway department budget? I have one Angel? below um, street lighting. We haven't gone through that, but I wondered about what exactly is the purpose of the health and safety fund that doesn't seem to be used year after year? And I'm not suggesting doing away with it. I was just curious to know what the purpose was. It's eight, line two, uh, 208. Yeah. 208. It's, oh, an, uh, it's hard to speak with this. Oh, that's under transfer station. That's under transfer station. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I'll wait till then. All right. Then I, I think that concludes the highway department budget presentation. Um, George, are you going to present this, this transfer station? Or? Yeah, I, I think to avoid it, nothing's basically changed other than payroll on that one. Okay. So, uh, as proposed, again, trying to get these guys up to a, a normal pay rate, uh, and by adding, and them adding, bringing back the staff up to what it should be, because a lot of people are getting by the guy that's in the shed doing the cardboard and dumping stuff where they want, and, you know, they're sliding in and out of there quite often. We need to get the staffing back to where it was there. There's more things to do. Um, and the guys keeping that place, and... I don't care who's gone to the transfer station. You can't tell me it looks like a, a, tr a dumpy plate. They keep the place clean, you know, and having the extra person there to keep an eye on where these people are dumping stuff and what they're dumping is going to be a good idea. Because you can't leave the building and walk all the way over towards where the brush is being dumped or stuff like that. So that extra body over there would be a plus. So uh, the increase you want to talk is on that page on that? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, actually, <clears throat> so I actually put it in here so everybody could see it. So currently, um, Paul Ames was um, at thirteen seventy-five an hour, and um, Ed suggested he be moved to sixteen fifty an hour. And I think it's an increase in hours too, right, George? Increase in hours. Well, he had uh, Paul's hours. He works more hours than most because he does the bailing. Yeah. Paul is. Uh, senior man over there right now, so um, he, he does all the bailing without being told he can make sure that everything is, you know, make sure there's room for put stuff when it's necessary and everything like that, so. Um, so, so Martel, um, um, Paul Martel and Gary Karen are, are being proposed to move from 13 to 15.50, and then the Saturday person is proposed to move to, to start at $15 an hour. Um, there was some market data that Ed provided for us, um, some of the local transfer stations, um, and the range was about 14 to 18. Um, and I also made some calls. Um, I called Berwick, who was 14. Uh, I called South Berwick, who was 18. So we felt, based on the market data, that was probably reasonable. That, you know, that's kind of, they're not significantly, but they're definitely under market. Um, again, same expectations is, um, that they have a job description and we do performance reviews. Any uh, other questions on the transfer station? Yeah, I do. Um, George, just there's, there's a, the line 213, the MSW demo in Holland. So that's pretty far below mid year cost. Do we expect that to hold tight for the rest of the year? That's so not yeah. up to date. I don't know yeah, that, that that's that, current. No, it's not actually. Okay. I mean, it, it changes weekly, so it's... I'm hoping to get... Um, no, but is it up to date at least as far as... Not, not uh, I don't know what the recent one is. Um, no, I'm going to try to get um, a quarter expenditures. Job. Okay. He's, Ed feels he's going to be okay with what, what it is right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
There is one thing we looked at we, when we took a tour today with Jack. Uh, we walked around the transfer station. We looked, we walked into the Quonset hut, and that's something that slipped our mind about the Quonset hut. Uh, the floor in there needs to be redone, and because the water's coming in underneath and wetting all the cardboard and stuff, and, you get, and we don't want to be losing bales and stuff. When they did the building, they just cut around so they could put a foundation, apparently, and never filled it back in. So our thoughts are we could put a cement floor in there and be done with it. And so I think we could probably do that under that uh, maintenance line. Right. So we put three thousand dollars back in there. Right. So um, even though he wasn't anticipating anything. Right. That may you know I think that may, may we may have to find a way to do it. It's going to cost a little more than three thousand, obviously. But uh, I think we could uh, leave that. I would leave that in there and see what we can do with that next summer. If, that's not something we're going to do because it's it's a little bit bigger project than we want to get into, and they need you, you need a you know a company to come in and do that floor for us. Okay. I mean, we say we did the ones on the lean to and stuff because it was not wide, and so that was twenty seven hundred dollars was supposed to be to do the lean to. So I know this is going to be significantly you know, yeah. more than that, but we did it for the price of the concrete. So, but other than that, Ed's uh, budget is. Uh, yeah. There, he is, and this is probably not the place to ask it. Uh, but we talked again with, you know, we met with Jack today as a new uh, select person, and we come up with some ideas of having a reserve fund, the money that comes in from the transfer station during the summer. If that money could be put aside in a contingency fund. Anything that goes over could be used with the money we bring in. They bring in about, I think they said $50,000 a year with under different things. So if that money could just sit in a contingency fund for the year, if we need to fix something, like if we go over on any items, it's a, and then at the end of the year, flush that fund back into the general fund. It, you know, like if we need to do a floor or something, if the money's there, instead of having to go back through the budget process and get what we need, you know, I mean, it, or, have, you know, an overexpenditure or something like that, it would cover that, and it's just a thought, you know, what, that we come up with. They, they, they brought that up to me, and uh, I, I didn't respond, I just, it, we, we, we think about it and talk about it, but um, everybody should take a tour, they, they've done a great job. I do it once a week. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you don't get to there. I try not to. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I, I just wanted to bring that up and everybody can get thinking about it. And another thing that I wanted to bring up, I didn't put nothing in the CRP this year. But we got thinking, you know, we don't need new everything. And with the CIP, I mentioned to Joe uh, the possibility of putting in the CIP a payloader, a full-size payloader, and a mini excavator. Not looking to buy something new. You always get a deal that can come out there. Two years ago, we had a chance to buy a sidewalk machine for half the price it was going to cost us. We couldn't, we didn't have the money, so it wasn't there. My thought is that if it's in the CIP, and there's money already started in that CIP for that machine, and we find a good used machine for half the money, it would only make common sense to purchase that machine. We don't use it like a Dover or Rochester. The machine's not used 24/7, so you're going to get the 20 years out of these used machines if you buy a lease left, you know, a lease return or something like that. It's just a way of saving money. Yeah? That's you know, and I think it's something that ought to be really looked at closely. If there's a, you know, even if it has to go to a warrant article to say. To say that, I think there's a way that should be able to be done. I know it's probably a legal thing to look at, but I, I, I'm just putting it out there. You know, I mean, buying, I know what machines cost, and I know stuff's expensive, and I know we will try to keep our budget lines low, but to try to save money with buying used equipment, and I think, I think we could benefit from that all the way around. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a select board uh, issue, Investigation. <laughs> Uh, so, but, yeah, sounds interesting. Um, other questions on the transfer station budget? Just that small point, again, about the health and safety fund. I was just curious about what it's for, but also 
line 214, and the kind of the bouncing around in the hauling and recycling, which um, was kind of crazy high in 2019, and then kind of dropped back to so much less. What, hey, I can explain what, that very yeah, easily. What happened? Before we were doing single stream recycling, everything went in one dumpster. Mm -hmm. We weren't making no money. It all went to transfer. It all went up to Rochester. Mm -hmm. They made plenty of money on our recycling, but we had to pay two hundred sixty-five dollars a ton. I mean, a load to have it hauled up there. Not counting the tonnage, about two hundred twenty-five dollars every time we took a load up there. Mm -hmm. Not counting the tonnage that was in that machine. I mean, in that compact. Thing. So we went to recycling. We bought the baler a few years back. Started bailing our plastics, our aluminum, our cardboard bent bay and bailed right along. We have Gaylords, which are the big square boxes where you put your paper in when you go in there. All that stuff brings in money to us. We send a tractor trailer load out of paper, you get about $2,000. You're not throwing that away. We have a load of plastics for it, you're getting about 2000 maybe more, depending on the prices at the time. We work with NRRA, which is New Hampshire Recycling Resources Association in Epsom. They find us the best deals we can get on anything. Our cardboard goes out, you get a load of cardboard that goes out, and you're bringing in $4,000 or more, you know, depending again on the price of it. That's why we want to make sure the stuff doesn't get wet, you know, and keep it at a good value. Our steel, our, our scrap metal. Mm -hmm. That all goes in the dumpster. Now we decide to clean that up, put a dumpster over there instead of throwing it on the ground and moving it twice. Berwick Iron brings us a dumpster at no charge. We fill it and they send us a check when they bring it over and empty it. No cost to the town. Our aluminum cans, we bail them. We bring them over to we put them, we bring them over to Berwick Iron. We get upwards of four, four or five hundred dollars a bale, or, a pick, a, or three bales or whatever we're hauling over on the truck. Mm -hmm. Our tin cans, we put in the bins as you clear it out. We dump them. When we have an empty dumpster from Berwick Island, we fill the bottom of the dumpster with the tin because they didn't, you can't bale it. It doesn't crush good enough to, to put it, you know, in a bale. So we just dump it in the bad dumpster. It goes as scrap steel. So we're making money on all this stuff. That is why you see that line of recycling hauling has gone down to almost nothing. We do have to pay to recycle the glass. We hope that we pay at a price of it would have cost us sixty-five dollars a ton before to get rid of it. We're paying thirty-five dollars a ton now to get rid of it, but we still have to pay to haul it up. It still goes to waste management, but they use it in filth or what have you. They, they can use it in hot dog. They can make glass balls out of it. Or they, the most people are using it, they mix it with gravel and put it underneath the roads. You can't have it on top. They had they found problems when they used it for glass ball yeah. with the sun. So you can use it anywhere where the sun's not going to shine. So it's going to be, you know, they use it underneath the roads. So recycling should stay the way it is and, you know, make money with this stuff. Ed showed, you know, me a, Ed showed me a spreadsheet this morning that it was around fifty thousand dollars of revenue that we made. don't we don't uh, haul or chip our brush anymore. We burn it one one day, one maybe three times a year, four times a year, depending on how big, you know how fast the brush comes in. So that you know that's another cost savings. Super, thank you. Other than that, I anything else. Sounds good. And they are doing a great job over there. It really is a good operation. Um, so before we move on, is it, does anybody on the budget plan have any input about the approach for the salary increases um, that we're proposing? I just wonder if anybody has any initial thoughts about it. I think the select board, if we're doing market data, is in a better position than we are to make mm -hmm. decisions about that. I mean, I don't see why we need to see what they're asking for. Uh, I think it's good that you 
refine things and you're doing the research that you need to. We certainly want to be fair and equitable and the budget committee is going to support something that's fair and equitable. And I don't think we need to be in the middle of that. I mean, just my opinion. I don't know how the rest of the members feel. But uh, that's a personnel matter. That's select board business. And budget committee is just supposed to either challenge it or accept kind of it. A, kind of focus on the bottom line. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have any input they want to go on that? So, uh, Joe, are you going to present, or is, or is Kevin? Joe will present. Oh, and, and I'll just speak to it. Now, you, you sent out, I mean, I, I was going to just go with, with mine, but you sent out. We'll talk about yours, that's... Joe, and I'll talk about what we were thinking for adjustments. Have a good night. If that's okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George. George. Thank you, George. I've seen you more today than I've seen well, my wife. Yeah. Yeah. You know when I when I saw Kim yours, which was more of a of an adjusted. I mean, I can go through the email that I sent sure, to anyway. you to the select board, and then I also sent it out to the um, to the budget committee. So let me find that here. Okay, that's yours. So as Kim mentioned, there was from the last the last SIP an excess of, of around one hundred and two thousand dollars. And so in the email I sent out, it, it did have that. There were things that the fire department came in with and talked about a vehicle exhaust system, and that was partially funded already. Well, they had a gross uh, capital cost of seventy five thousand. It was already thirty thousand in the reserve. And the suggestion from from the SIP committee was to you know, take forty five thousand of that excess and let the fire department um, complete their vehicle exhaust system. And and they had come in and not only to the SIP committee but I think also to the select board and, and went through their numbers. Now, Kim, do you think it's better to as as I go through these to look at your sheet? Um, um, do you want to talk about everything that isn't adjusted first? Well, I, I didn't do a pro well. Actually, everything isn't adjusted except for the vehicle exhaust, and I can explain that out a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to think what would be the best. Um, well, let, let me go. Why don't we do this? Why don't you? Talk, since we're on the vehicle exhaust system, there was okay. something that the sure. SIP committee suggested, and then the select board, in, in, after their presentation and their discussion, made some changes. Right. So originally, um, the ask was for seventy-five thousand. Uh, when we met yesterday. Yes, sir. Yesterday or Monday? Monday. It was Monday. Um, with the fire department, um, Sean Wooden um, presented a couple of proposals. Um, one, an air system, um, which they got an estimate for $41,000. And then there was a hose system, and they got an estimate for $46,000. So they felt that they could live with a $50,000 mark for that. So that was the reduction that I talked about. So um, there's a $25,000 savings in that. Um, and the hope was maybe we could use that for roads. Okay, so, so the, that's the adjustment. So the forty-five thousand originally suggested from the SIP is now twenty-five thousand less. Um, put back into the SIP surplus. Let's talk about that. Right. So, so the fire department. What, what if, are you looking at right now? Uh, let's see. So two 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 two. So originally um, that was seventy-five thousand. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. But the fire department um, now says that they can live with fifty thousand. Um, so that is a savings of twenty five thousand dollars. And that just curiosity now. So even going from seventy five to fifty, 
it was it was for the the more of the uh, I'll call it the state of the art, but not the not the system where they have to hook up the hoses. Yes. The bottom of the truck. That's what it. That's yeah, it's an air system. Right, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. The right they showed us pictures of it and yep. went through the whole yep. thing. So when they came to the SIP, then they found that they had gotten a better. I guess since then they've gotten they got a better, better deal. estimate yeah. on it. Okay, great. Um, so so the, and the other um, the other portion that Joe I saw in your email there was a, still an excess of nineteen thousand dollars and right. such. So basically, it's twenty five plus that nineteen is about forty four, almost forty five thousand dollars in excess funds mm -hmm. that we thought would be good to use towards the roads. Um, so that's the only adjustment that we suggested. Okay. Um, so the other thing on the SIP was the, and, and again, you know, the, as even when Suzanne was doing this, you know, the whole idea of this was just more of kind of like a planning thing to set money aside for long-range projects. One of the things that I, I found as I started to look at this is, is that it was not only capital improvement projects, but also other types of things. There was there was a new equipment fund that, if you recall, there was a um, actually a warrant article for that. There were kind of operating budget items that, that the department had wanted to keep track of. And then there's also this American Rescue Plan, which was the government funding that came out of the the pandemic stuff, where they were where they were uh, making money available to towns for very specific things. So in the spreadsheet I sent out, you'll 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 be able to see all of these things, with some of them being SIPRI specific, which is where that that Warren article comes in. Like last year, I think it was two hundred thousand dollars for capital improvement projects. That's what pretty much goes on a yearly basis. And what we tried to do was look at things that are two years out or so see that, that the department heads were saying they needed, make sure that the funding was close to those. And then, as we also looked out over the remaining years, was, was try to make the, the, the yearly Warren article for SIP to be a little bit level, in the sense that not to have it go one year 175,000, another year 200, 250,000, as an example. Mm -hmm. So as we went through all of this, as the later years, was, was to try to get to that point. And in, in the in the detailed spreadsheet, I mean, if I thought I was going to do this, I would have put it up on the screen. So you have to bear with me on it. But you'll you'll if you look in the spreadsheet, you'll see that the the SIP allocation that is being proposed as we look out over the years is typically in the anywhere from like for next year, it's two hundred seven thousand is the suggested piece. To twenty twenty three, it's one eighty six, and then it's. It's 211. That was just trying to, to layer the money out there. So that was the general approach that we applied here. And in the email, one of the other things we looked at was, you know, the highway department has frequently talked about, I guess, when that garage was built, there's been a yearly, you know, depending on the storm, always problems with the roof. Mm -hmm. So the suggestion was to, okay, there's a, they, we had a rough capital cost of 50000 there was 12000 in there. We said, well, instead of dealing with these four to $5,000 bills, depending on how many storms roll through this, get the job done right, it'll last for the next 30 or 40 years. And, that, and so the suggestion also as part of the SIP financing would be $38,000 um, $38, coming that to finally get the roof done. So based on what we also had here, so even after doing all that, there was about $19,800 left. But we're talking that's also going to go up another 25000 because of the adjustment for the fire department uh, vehicle exhaust system. Um, outside of the SIP, there were, some, there, were, there were a few main points. One was uh, the police department, when they presented, they talked about uh, the body camera items, which I think as you read the press, everybody would say is becoming a bigger and bigger thing, that they would make that part of their police operating budget. Uh, the, the fire department for the vehicle wash area, this is something that the, um, that the fire department presented to us as well as the, uh, the select board. There are, there are deadlines for that next year, but it also seems like it's something that's eligible for this American Rescue Plan funding. Um, 
So that was a that was a suggestion on that. That's up that's in, that's up to the select board to decide. Uh, there is a last year we also had a warrant article for the um, the equipment replacement fund that was six thousand. It's we're suggesting it. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall what it was last year. This year we're we're you know we want the select board to consider that uh, a warrant article for about six thousand dollars for the equipment fund uh, replacement piece. And then there was also talk about town hall uh, AC compressors. These were also some things out there. And um, that, 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 that we, we suggested in 2022 that they be replaced. Mostly, you know, it's got to get done, just get the work completed and, and funded. And then, like I said, the final one was, was that we suggested that the 2022 Warren article, which is the main thing that comes out of this, for SIP funding be Two hundred seven thousand five hundred. If you go by the spreadsheet, that's what's needed. But you know, I think it should be somewhere in that ballpark that we we'll think is appropriate for what the taxpayer is, is, is willing to put up with. Question. So, so. Um, so I guess the select board has looked at this. You're, can you, you guys have, have made the one change. That's it. And if you go, let me look at your. The one question um, I had on this was on the reserve funds. Uh, so line 250, 292, the Conservation Land Trust Fund. So, the, the, is this the proposal from the select board? Is is to have a, a warrant article for fifteen thousand? It's it's interesting that you ask that because there was no proposals at all in there. So we um, didn't really have any idea what the last board was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so we just carried forward to fund it again. It doesn't uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be funded. Perhaps Denise would like to speak about that. No. I mean, I, uh, can I add a little? So, sure. you know, I'm, all, I'm on the the uh, the conservation commission, mm -hmm. and so one of the things we one of the last warrant article was really last year was you know it, while we always had this warrant article to to move funds into conservation that it always came from the land use change tax which you know that's where somebody has a piece of property that's in current use they sell it. The buyer of that property owes an additional 10% from that sale into this land trust fund. So in the past, it's all, you know, in the few years that I've seen it, whenever there was a warrant article, there was always that line saying um, no funding to come from taxation. Well, that's because it was really just an accounting of moving it from one fund to the other. So this past warrant article basically uh, zeroed out the land trust fund, and so I'm sorry, the land land use trust fund. And now, so let's get these things confused. Um, the land use trust fund. So, if, if we're going to do any additional funding to this, and one of the discussions we've had within the conservation committee is that it, it's in the best interest, and we got to convince the, the the taxpayers that this is the case that. We need to continue being proactive on it. So we have had discussions about making sure that there would be a Warren article for this for this 2022 that would continue to fund that. So we're in a position to work like or with organizations like with like CELT. Um, but the big difference is it's going to have a tax rate effect, whereas versus before it, it never did. Um, so that would that, but I guess. I'm questioning, I'm, or I'm, I'm wondering, is, is these reserve funds are all meant to be, okay, so you're saying that these are all reserve funds and we should either put a warrant article out for them or not? Um, so that, I think that was the expectation. So okay. And now, in talking about it, I think that probably we need to do a little bit of research, um, more so on the town reevaluation fund and the conservation land trust fund to see what the balances are. Um, 
I feel like that's probably a better step than making a commitment to that. Um, I can definitely see funding the Culvert Reserve Fund and the Equipment Fund. Um, but those two, I think, probably are two of the question marks right yeah. now. I, I can tell you what the, the fund is about. I can find that email easily enough. Because um, when I asked, I'm drawing a blank on, on the person I spoke to on this, but the Land Use Trust Fund, there was a little bit over $25,000 in it. The Warren article for 2021 proposed moving $25,000 from the Land Use Trust Fund to the Land tr Conservation Land Trust Fund. And I think that Conservation Land Trust Fund, don't put it down in the minutes because I'll, I'll, I'll get that to you. I think it's like 220000 including, but that would include the 25000 coming over from the Land Use Tax Fund to, to it. I just, I know you're thinking and you're looking, um, so it's not a great time to ask a question, but you said that that fund was zeroed out and now it would come from taxation, and I'm confused why it would change. The, it would be used, right now, it's kind of like I said, the money into the land use tax fund is, is funds that are the result of somebody right. taking a piece of property out of current use. That always had a balance on it. After 2021's Warren article, that balance was put to zero. And those funds were moved over to the Conservation Land Trust Fund. So the Conservation Land Trust Fund is, is what is kind of administered by the Conservation Commission with obviously town input on if, if there was ever anything that would happen with that. So, when there used to be a Warren article, let me go, I'll read that, I have to look at here. Last year, there was Article 16, Conservation Land Trust Capital Reserve Fund. And it says, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 25000 to be added to the Conservation Land Trust Fund. That's the one that uh, we have on the set right now. In the past, that was always coming from the land use tax. Fund, right. Right? So that, that land use tax was zero. Now, I, the Conservation Commission still feels that there should be continuous funding into the Conservation Land Trust Fund. The point is, is that it's, it would not come from, it would have to come from an impact on the tax rate. Because that fund is zero. Right. right. Assuming that was, nothing else goes in there. That's right. Okay. right. Gotcha. Could I just ask a question? That fund hasn't, uh, that account hasn't been eliminated. No. I mean, if a developer comes in, buys a piece of property, and has to step up to the plate, there will be funds in that account. Right. So, but that, you're saying in the interim, because there are no funds in the account right now, that more than likely the select board will propose to put money in the conservation fund anyway. Through taxation, yes. Yes. Now, some towns. From, from the research I've done has actually shown that they actually say specifically any taxes coming, any any revenue coming in from something out of current use should go immediately into land trust fund. Not everybody does that. The town, Rollinsford, seems that it goes into the change use tax fund. But did the select board make that decision to take it out of the change in use fund and put it in the conservation fund? The Warren article. The Warren article. Okay, yeah. but I mean, the select board proposed that, right? To yes. the Warren, and yeah. the Warren article passed. Okay. Right. But it didn't eliminate that account, so no. it's a possibility that could still be funded. But you're saying, in addition to that, the select board, I guess, is saying, in addition to that, they're going to request a Warren article that gives a regular contribution right to the conservation right I think the year before so if I got the 2019 
I think the number might have been twenty twenty five thousand, and then in um, no, I'm sorry. Let me go back. To, you know, I think it might have been fifteen thousand, and then last year for twenty twenty we did twenty five thousand with the full understanding there was no amount to come from taxation that it would just be a, a, a bookkeeping entry from the change use over to the conservation fund. So but basically, you can't anticipate that that's going to happen every year. Right. Therefore, Kim has Kim suggested. Okay. And, I, and I think the the conservation commission has some work to do as far as educating the taxpayer that this is a wise use of fund taxpayer funds because if you can manage your your land in town better, you know all these services that come along with with development. Are not issues. You don't have school issues. You don't have maybe additional fire and police. So, this is something that I think we have to be a little bit better for people to understand that they're not going to look at this and say twenty-five thousand. No way, cut it out. But if they understand the benefit of doing something like this, mm -hmm. it can make it a little. You know, they can see. You know, three, four years out, keeping development from happening can be actually a, uh, a reduction in tax rates. So. But my point would also be that this Article 16 would be written the exact same way. If the select board wanted to do it 15,000, it would be 15,000. But that parenthesis of no amount to come from taxation wouldn't be true. Thank you, Jim. Okay. That was helpful. I'm sorry, I think that's still be, to be determined. Yeah. You mean mm -hmm. as far as what the amount should be? And, and, and I shouldn't fund it at all. Yeah. Uh, but I'm certainly happy to hear from the budget committee about their thoughts about funding it. Uh, I have two questions for you. I think I know what these funds are used for, but before I make an assumption about that, can you tell me what the funds are used for? The, the Conservation Land Trust funds. What would be an expenditure from that? To acquire land. To buy, yeah, take land out of development would be probably the classic one. Right, but how does that work? Is it, is, is it to assist an individual? Uh, I don't know. I've been on the commission for a year, so I'm still learning, but I, so, but I don't know. Okay, because my question related to whether there were means tests for using those funds. But I don't know if the town of Rollinsford uses those to support individual um, decision making paying for a legal fee to, or an assess, um, a um, pro property badge, or well, surveys, or things like that. What, what does the money cover? When it, it's paid out? Well, there is, there's an Article 17 land surveys and related expenses, which I think goes more to that. So that is for the individual landowner. Well, I'll, I'll read what it says here. Uh, Who else would it go to? Related expenses that may be incurred in assisting private landowners who donate yes. conservation easements. So, so to purchase the point options. I'm trying to make is the education piece is really important because mm -hmm. justifying how those funds are spent and what the purpose of it is yes. will make an entirely huge difference between yep. the town supporting that and not supporting it. Yep. And particularly, you know, around the means testing. And I don't mean to say that, you know, uh, people should be disqualified from receiving support if their income was in a certain place. But I think, I think that the kind of question that comes forth for me is, these are taxpayer funds, and what, what is the commission doing to ensure the proper distribution of it? That's all. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it's the Conservation Commission's ability to make those decisions. I think it's still select board and town taxpayer responsibility to, to review those. And I mean, I, I just, my understanding so far is it's really much more of just a, here's some, here's some things that you should consider town with input from the select board and, and if it does actually go to the, to the town taxpayer for voting. Well, a lot of land in Rollinsburg has been protected in that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you keep that going forward and continuing to receive support for setting that money aside? Right. And some of it is, I think, being able to do it when it comes up. I mean, I, I mean, I think like the SIP, 
it's kind of like saying you, you want your powder dry because if something comes up, you want to be able to work with a, an organization like CELT to come in and you know, be part of the solution to that. So it's not necessarily a full, I mean, when I look around, there's some great stuff out here on some of the some of the county websites that show lander and conservation, and there seems to be a couple flavors of those of which I'm not fully versed in them. I've seen land that are just strictly easements. I've seen lands that are actually managed directly by Celt. I see land like the Scout land, which is kind of like Celt's kind of like in the middle of it, but it's not really their land versus. The McInerney property over where I live is, is Celt property, so there's a couple different flavors of that. And even with a lot of Robin Aikman's land, you know, a lot of it is 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 in a trust with her as the trustee, but it also says it's conservation. So there's a lot of different flavors around all of that. But all it accomplishes the same thing. It keeps land in its natural state for farming, for nature, whatever. And our land's being farmed. But there are uh, conservation trusts willing to come in, but they want a match. Yeah. So they'll say to Rollinsford, you need to put in 150000 we'll put in a million, yeah. whatever that number is. Yeah. That happened some years ago when somebody wanted to put in a large condo development. And then we, we stepped in and with, the concept, with the conservation and yeah. took the land Please. out of... Would have been, I don't know, 137 yeah, commercial condos. Mm -hmm. It wasn't desirable for us at the time. and yeah. We were fortunate enough we had that money to match. And that's what I think Joe is saying. Is let's have that buffer there in the event someone takes a beautiful piece of land and we say, you know what, we'd rather have it in conservation. Let's have that for consideration. But if the money's not there, we're, mm -hmm. we're at the, beholden to the developer. So I think it's a great idea, personally, Joe. I, I believe that, that uh, some of the residents have put land in conservation. They're not getting any kind of a, you know, they're not being, it's not being bought. Their rights aren't necessarily being bought. They're doing it out of, out of their goodwill. Yeah, and I think that's the different kinds of flavor. There's the land, I, you know, like I said, I'm trying, I'm really just trying to get into this now, but you have the land where self actually takes it over and it's out of control, and then I'm not fully understanding, I don't understand yet how somebody like Robin Aikman, who has property that is both fully, I'll say, owned by Celt, and then other property that, that is there as conservation, but it's under her, it's under a trust that she's the trustee of. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know if that's a temporary thing. I, I get the impression from talking to Linda McGurvin, the given, that it's, permanently in conservation, even though the legality of it is, you know, might not be clear to me. My, my family's land is also has, has a secondary, it's still our land, but there's a secondary organization, I can't remember which one it is, yeah. but it's, it's like a trustee, if you will. Mm -hmm. What does SURF stand for? What is, you keep mentioning so, South, 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 Southeast Regional Land Trust? South, South, yes. Southeast Land Trust. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a number of them around here. Okay. Uh, that was interesting. Any other uh, <laughs> questions? I need some more information about that for you, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any more questions on CIP? Any new business that anybody would like to bring up? I look at Joe, because he always has something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Motion, second from Tim. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned.